It's with EP great pleasure that I now introduce our next speaker, uh, journalist, columnist, commentator, Nick Cohen. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm what Dave calls eminent. That means uh, boring. Um, uh, so, uh, and for you, Dave, I want to give you some idea um, of how bad this law is by going through some recent cases. And as there are lawyers here, and it's always good to see them, uh, I'm sure they will rush in and stop me if uh, I land well as soon as we're rich. Um, but I do want you to understand what damage we're doing to liberal values in this country by tolerating this law. Um, uh, the, the first the first thing is they don't even follow their own principles. Libel is meant to be a protection of good character. For instance, if I were to say that the gentleman in the row there has ginger hair, when in fact he has red hair, I may be wrong, but that's not libelous. I, it, is, it is defaming someone of good character. Yet time and time and time again, the bloody judges let uh, uh, criminals, charlatans, uh, people on the run, uh, pseudoscientists, people with no reputation to protect, uh, use the English law uh, to silence their critics. This is the case of uh, Carly bin Mahfouz yeah, yeah, yeah. against Rachel Ehrenfeld. Uh, Rachel Ehrenfeld is New York author and asked, a serious New York author. Uh, after the attacks on Twin Towers, she writes a book called Funding Evil. Uh, about the, who funds Al Qaeda. Uh, Bin Mathuz's name comes up because in Bosnia documents were found linking his charity uh, with cash donations, uh, money transfers to Al Qaeda. Um, uh, and he sues uh, for mentioning his name and for implying he was, in fact, funding Al Qaeda. He, he says, I knew nothing about the money going to my charity. Now, in normal circumstances, in normal rules of evidence, in normal adult discussion, you would say, look, okay, there's this charity, what's giving money to Al Qaeda, here's the head of it, uh, he says he's not. Um, even though this book has never been printed in Britain, has never been published in Britain, Mr. Justice Eadie allows him to sue in London, even though he's a Saudi turned, uh, I think an Irish national now, and Rachel is a, uh, a, an American. Uh, he'd get the wrong woman to censor. Uh, Rachel was so outraged, she first got the New York State Legislature, then the House of Representatives, and then the Senate to pass a bill saying that libel judgments made in Britain are unenforceable in America. <laughs> well, you laugh. Actually, this, is, this ought to be a moment of national shame. Uh, America, a fellow democracy, which shares our common law, which has our roots in Britain, says our legal system, our judges, our law, is, 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 like, um, is like a failed state, is, is, you know, is a product of a failed state, uh, and Americans need special protection from it. Not only Americans, uh, uh, a sort of unreported case which um, Dennis and Shane, who along with Evan Harris, and um, Michael Gove have been doing good work in the Congress, trying to find a way of it. Dennis made the point that just before the entire Western banking system collapsed, um, uh, a Danish newspaper, so I won't attempt to pronounce, because I probably could pronounce it, because even though I pronounced it wrong, no one here would know. <laughs> uh, a Danish newspaper was investigating the Icelandic banks. Instantly, a libel written in London. A Danish newspaper, Icelandic banks, what on earth has it got to do with our judiciary? Um, I, could, I could go on, boy, with uh, human rights groups working in Africa who threatened with libel, about solicitors who are representing West Africans, I uh, think from the Ivory Coast, who's, um, uh, 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 who suffered when uh, there was a chemical leak from a cargo ship. Solicitors put the details up of the case, they're suing. The solicitors are threatened with libel in London. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is, you know. British law, English law, is claiming through the internet a kind of global jurisdiction, and all over the world, dodgy people, uh, people uh, on the edges of respectability, I think I go with that, are flocking to London, Russian oligarchs, Saudi billionaires, to use it to silence their critics. Now, if they are dubious people in the areas I work in, consider what it means for science. Uh, uh, Dave, I think, or Brian, was slightly wrong when he said that um, 
it's just alternative medical practitioners who, who are using libel. Anyone can. If you've got the money and you've got the vindictiveness and you realise the opportunities that London offers to rich and powerful people and organisations, along the Shushu boutiques and the, you know, the apartments in Kensington, uh, some very compliant judges, uh, anyone can do it. Uh, there is, I'm probably going to choose you, there, there, there's a doctor from Shrewsbury who uh, was involved in medical tests for a um, treatment for hole in the heart. Mm. Uh, he came to the conclusion he's, the, the, this treatment wasn't as good as he said, as it said. Um, other people involved said, well, maybe it is. Yes, there's a different scientific dispute. You settle it with, uh, with, with peer review, with argument, often very strong and very bitter arguments, as anyone who's been involved in scientific disputes will know. But no, um, uh, MMT, the company that's uh, putting forward this treatment, is suing him in the libel court. Um, now, they're clearly uh, doctors, scientists, scientists in this room who are far better qualified talking this about me, but what on earth is the point of doing that? No scientific dispute is settled by lawyers and judges. And you don't just have to take my word for it. Um, Professor Sir John Lilliman, advised the National Ethics Research Ethics Service, was able to comment on what was happening in America, not in Britain, not in his own country, uh, to an American medical journal, and he just said, look, this legal action between M MMT and the doctor is just a spat. Yeah, we need more research to settle this argument. We don't need judges, we don't need lawyers, we don't need Carter Rock, we don't need Schilling, we don't need Mr. Justice Eady in the Court of Appeal in the House of Lords. You know, no one in a scientific dispute will say, well, that's settled because the judge ruled against Simon Singh. That means chiropractic isn't uh, 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 a wacky alternative treatment to traditional science. No one will believe that. What they can do, though, is stop criticism, is stop informing patients, gullible patients, who may go there, and, you know, in the case of medicine, they may, may lose more than money. They may, they may lose their health, after they may lose their health either directly through, um, and Simon in his book gives plenty of examples of chiropractic going wrong, but more indirectly through taking a... a, a, a I was about to say bogus, but I realised I can't, can I? <laughs> uh, taking a, a treatment from, that may not quite be top hole and uh, not going to the National Health Service. So, um, Simon, uh, you, know, you may have thought you were just taking on a, uh, a, um, uh, a small group of nutters and quacks with over in your lawyers. In fact, you're now at the international centre of an international maelstrom uh, with or everything uh, up against it. Uh, I feel, with the sign that's sitting there, I feel like I'm able to turn from being a journalist into, into sort of Chris Tarrant, really. And say, well, look, Simon, you know, you've already lost a hundred thousand pounds. You can keep that hundred thousand pounds off, but do you want to go for the full million? <laughs> um, but, uh, 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 but I won't. But uh, uh, I, I, I will just say this. Simon deserves absolute support. Uh, yeah. He really does.